Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Last Sunday's district council elections were seen by many as the opportunity to deliver a defining political verdict on last year's umbrella movement protests. If that's true, voters certainly did have something to say. The turnout rate was 47%, up 5.5% on 2011 and a record high. As always, pro-government candidates had more resources. This time, reporters documented how transportation services, mainly for elderly voters, led to advice being given on how they should vote. Even so, it appears that it left some of them rather confused. Once again, the pro-government side took the majority of seats, although the DAB, the biggest pro-government party, lost 17 seats. Pro-democratic candidates, on the other hand, gained 25 seats. Both the traditional pro-democrat and pro-establishment parties suffered losses, with some of their long-established figures defeated. One was Democrat Albert Ho, who lost his seat to pro-Beijing rival Junius Ho. Previously, many people thought that, you know, um, young upcomers were totally inexperienced, with no service record, would have no chance of virtually little chance of winning the election. But this time, it seems that uh, we have to change our paradigm of thinking. This is not so. Especially, uh, I think, um, after the Embarrow movement, uh, many general public uh, do have some um, expectation um, from the younger generation who are inspired in joining in, um, in politics and taking part in public affairs. More than 260,000 new voters registered this year. Of the 3.7 million currently registered, around 16% are aged between 18 and 30. It's been suggested that this new group of voters played a decisive part in the results, more in some areas than others. DAB lawmaker and pro Beijing veteran Christopher Chung has represented the Eastern District for more than two decades and he was defeated by a relatively unknown candidate, so-called umbrella soldier, Chu Chi Kin. Chung's fellow party member, Elizabeth Kwat, suffered a similar fate, defeated by the Labour Party's Yip Wing. Yip said he only decided to run to provide a choice for voters in his district and to stop Kwat gaining a seat by default. The Democratic Party's Josephine Chan, who's represented her Tunmun district for the past 20 years, was ousted by a young first-time runner, DAB candidate Mo Xing Fung. I am not a surprise. I'm quite prepared that this uh, situation would, uh, would be like this. I mean, to collaborate with uh, community leaders, uh, such as the Mutual Aid Committee, um, it's not a style developed by uh, DAB, I think it's a style developed by the Chinese Com uh, Communist Party, in fact. Uh, they selected, selectively uh, targeted on this kind of uh, community leaders because they uh, had a, a, a rather strong relationship with uh, the ordinary residents and then they can make use of this kind of relations to, um, to increase the, their support uh, towards our DAB. To avoid losing seats as a result of split votes, the pan-democrats tried to coordinate their allies via a platform called Power for Democracy to avoid clashes in the same constituency. However, the strategy did not work in some districts, such as Shamshui Po. Chan Wing Yan, a newcomer backed by the pro Beijing Hong Kong Federation of Trade Unions, defeated the three term Lycock district councillor and legislator Frederick Funking Kay of the Association for Democracy and People's Livelihood by just 99 votes. Fung thinks his failure was the direct result of a vote split between himself and candidate Eric Wong chung a former member of both the ADPL and the Democratic Party, who got some 200 votes standing as an independent, votes that arguably led to Fung's defeat. When I doing some home visits, some people told me, telling me that uh, the family is, is an SSA recipients 
because of Mr. Wong helping him. If he doesn't stand for the stand for the election this time, I think this group of people's role should be well for me. 之前嗰兩屆其實都已經係喺某種苦戰嘅狀態裏面，唔係真係一個好大規模嘅一個即係領先嘅狀態之前一路大家可能估計黃仲奇可以分咗馮檢基三四百票，咁已經足以致命㗎啦。咁到最後都反映佢輸九十九票係一個即係係一個我諗行內人會覺得係一個好合理嘅戰果。The pro-Beijing DAB has been reviewing why some of its most experienced district councillors were defeated. But the party's chairwoman, Starry Lee, does not acknowledge that this was a consequence of young umbrella movement-inspired candidates standing for election. However, a Facebook post by a League of Social Democrats 2011 district council candidate alleged that there was a more sinister way the pro-Beijing camp sought to tackle the challenge from the new generation. Remzi Wu Hingyin said in a post that a friend of his with a pro-establishment background asked him whether he'd be interested in standing for the Taihan constituency and implied that it would be helpful to split the pro-Democrat candidate's vote. He decided not to do so. Yang Shu Ying, one of the umbrella soldiers, took the seat in Taihang with 1,398 votes. If, as hoped by some, the elections were returning a verdict on the umbrella movement, many could take heart from the fact that several of the so-called umbrella soldiers did win seats. In Wan Chai's Taihang constituency, Yang Shu Ying, a member of the Good Day Wan Chai group, formed in the wake of the Umbrella Movement, defeated the pro-establishment New People's Party candidate Wang Chengqi. Young Spiration was also formed after the Umbrella Movement. Nine of its members competed with pro-establishment district councillors across different neighbourhoods. In a Wanpo West constituency, 29-year-old Kwang Po Yin defeated the current Kowloon City District Council Chairman Lao Wai Wing. Kwang Po Yin was the only one of the nine young inspiration candidates to win. In the neighboring constituency of Wampo East, her fellow candidate 24-year-old Yao Wai Cheng lost to veteran pro-establishment figure Priscilla Lung by just 304 votes. <laughs> For some, the main reason to run is the opportunity to monitor firsthand the work of the councils. Wang Chi Ken ran for and won the seat in the Kuntong District Council because he's unhappy with the proposed construction of a 50 million music fountain at Kuntong Promenade. 所以我覺得我們區市民應該,我們在佢未通過之前,我們在議會裡面監察他的資源運用,是不是更加有用呢?所以其實激發起我們去參加區議會選舉呢個原因。Among the biggest surprises of last Sunday's elections was that in the new territories east and west constituencies, the new Democrats outperformed all other political groups with a staggering 94% success rate. Under the banner of pragmatic localism, 15 out of 16 neo-democrats won seats. Three of the group's seat-winning first-time candidates are only in their early 20s. Legislator Gary Fan, a founding member of the neo-democrats, believes young voters are becoming more determined to maintain Hong Kong's own identity. 
by uh, nurturing young talent uh, um, as an incumbent uh, district councillor, we really work with them and uh, walk with them around uh, in the district so that they can uh, closely uh, monitor and learn from us and, uh, and, and uh, did a, a really good job in a uh, uh, campaign at this time. 新民主同盟，我諗一路范國威走嗰條路線係比較本土嘅。咁於是乎就話誒喺成個即係泛民嘅光譜裏面咧，咁即係一路都有啲即係本土派嘅人覺得係唔應該投溫和泛民。咁就可能啲票未必會落到落去民主黨啊、民協啊等等嘅，即係嗰啲政團身上，甚至乎公民黨啊等等。咁就誒，但係嗰啲票會仍然帶繼續投俾新民主同盟。The 15 new Democrat district councillors are entitled to nominate a candidate to run for a functional constituency super seat in the Legislative Council next year. But the party stresses that it's not setting its sights there yet. We are in principle against this idea of uh, joining the uh, super seat. But uh, we will not rule out uh, the possibility that uh, we might, we might uh, work with other uh, Democratic Party to nominate friends of other Democratic Party uh, to run for the super seats. Welcome back. Well, in part one, we highlighted some of the results in the District Council elections. Now for the post-mortem. And with us in the studio are Emily Lau, Chairwoman of the Democratic Party, Holden Chow, Vice Chairman of the Democratic Alliance for the Betterment and Progress of Hong Kong, and Joseph Cheng, Holden Chow, can I turn to you? Before the election, the DAB and various other <coughs> pro-government parties were saying it would deliver a crushing blow as a verdict on the umbrella movement. It didn't turn out like that. Well, um, I think if you look at the result uh, from DAB, uh, we gained uh, actually more votes compared to the last election. We have uh, uh, 300,000, more than 300,000 votes this time. Uh, but I agree that um, this election is a tough battle because uh, we uh, secured the same number of seats compared to the last district council election. Well, you didn't. Now we you have, lost. You no, lost we seats. have 119 seats because uh, we scrapped the appointed seats, so we don't count. Uh, but well, what would let's, happen? Let's is, look at the election. Yeah, in let's the election, look at the election. Now, seats. the common feature, what we would agree is. Uh, uh, the result actually heralds the fact that uh, it seems that Hong Kong people are very eager to offer chance to new face and youngsters. And you know, uh, these are green horns and for example, the, um, <coughs> the youngsters or the umbrella soldiers uh, who take part in this election and they have uh, successf successfully uh, obtained a very astonishing result and outcome. You think this is about age, not about politics? Uh, well, I think both. I mean, politics and age too. We, we still haven't got a uh, figure uh, on the allocation of the voting preference and different age groups. And, but we, we got a review on that too. Uh, but what would happen is uh, uh, because these umbrella soldiers, uh, they have secured uh, more than 70,000 votes this time. So uh, I think we, we are bound to listen uh, to their demand too. I mean, after the election, I mean, we obviously, we appreciate the support uh, from the people who voted for DAB. But okay. obviously, we still have to listen to the people and respect the people who didn't vote for us. Well, let me ask yeah. Emily Lau about that, because mm -hmm. the umbrella soldiers, I think people are saying, had a detrimental effect on the vote for the Democratic Party. Not really, no. No? No. Well, in the sense that, that, that the vote for the Democratic camp increased, but in individual constituencies, some quite significant failures occurred because of the I intervention of these other, other groups. I don't think too many of our candidates lost because of them. And, uh, and I'm very pleased to see so many young people taking part and uh, talking about the DAB. I read a story about the DAB chairperson as Dari Lee being summoned to the central government liaison office at night uh, for a dressing down. I don't know whether it's true or not. Well, let me ask but obviously, I've never, never heard about that. You it's never rumor. heard about it? It's rumor, oh, well. <laughs> but obviously, they did not do too well. I don't know how much money they got from the central government, not just the DAB, but all the other pro Beijing camp. They must have got millions of dollars to fund this. And then they had such miserable result. And you're right. 
they, they at first they said they were going to do very well, and now <laughs> they were not well, trounced. We never, we, but we uh, you didn't do we well at do all. Well, at the beginning, and we never looked down or underestimate the. Uh, the I battle thought you said the umbrella movement was I very never, bad, and the people were going to take well, revenge. We're going to lose. Didn't you say that? I Oden? never say that. I never say well, that. You Your party. Never that. <laughs> <laughs> I never say that. Yeah. Well, that, that, let me ask uh, Joseph Cheng. I mean, your job, so to speak, in the election was to coordinate the activities of the pro-democrats. It had patchy results, did it not, this coordination? We started early and we completed our task in the sense that there were no clashes among all pro-democracy groups taking part in the coordination process. We talked to many youth groups, umbrella groups, and managed to reduce uh, constituencies with clashes down to the number of six. I think this is very good results from the pro-democracy movement's point of view. The most important achievement, I think, is that the pro-Beijing United Front cannot say that we lose support because of our position on, the, on political reforms and because of our position on the occupation campaign. And how do you interpret the fact that, that two of the so-called extreme um, pro-democrat parties, the People's Power, League of Social Democ um, Democrats, Failed to get and any the hot seats. Dogs. And hot dogs, yeah. Failed to get any seats at all. Well, it has a lot to do with the electoral system. District council elections are single constituency, simple majority elections. So you need to have a majority. Even when you have three or more candidates, you still need about 30, 40 percent of the votes at least. And usually it's a two way contest. This does not uh, favor uh, radical groups. Their ideal scenario is to get about 10% of the votes in every single geographical constituency in the direct elections to the Legislative Council. Let me mm. ask Holden Chow. I mean, yes. One of the most bizarre things that was said <coughs> after the election was by um, a defeated a DAB candidate, Elizabeth Quatt, who said mm. the elections were too political. Mm. <laughs> it seems a strange thing to say about an election. Well, I think um, every election could be political. And I mean, uh, we, as I said, I mean, people turn out to vote. Uh, we need to find out the reason behind. I mean, right now, as I said, we still haven't got an exact figures to look at the allocation of the voting preference and the age group and the, all sort of things. And we need to carry out a review on that. But one thing we must not deny is uh, people, especially the first time, first time voters, they came out to vote for some reason. Um, it may be political. It may be uh, um, uh, 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 supporting the Occupy protest, or it may be anti-Occupy protest too. They all seem um, to be political reasons well, to me. So that's why I say this election, uh, uh, if you ask the voters what is the reason behind for coming out to vote, they probably comprise of many reasons. It could be political reasons, it could be regional reasons. I think the it could, very yeah. high voter turnout rate, 47%, is very significant. I do believe that Hong mm. Kong people today mm. would like to seize every opportunity to articulate their views, mm. to articulate their political positions, because mm a significant segment of the population do feel that mm. their core values, their lifestyles are being threatened. Mm. I think this is the most important thing. Mm. And I do agree with you that it seems extremely surprising when the pro-Beijing media said, well, why should the uh, district council elections be suddenly so politicized? Why should the soccer match between Hong Kong and Beijing and, and China suddenly become politicized? Yeah. But let me ask Emily Lau, I mean, in some senses, this really isn't good for you because there is a feeling that, that the Democratic Party's dominant position on the pro-democratic side is being whittled away, particularly by these younger elements. I think we have to accept the voters' verdict <coughs> and we do it with humility. And uh, if we do not do too well, then we have to improve ourselves. And we are very happy to work with people of like minds. So we are very happy to see the high voter turnout rate. I contributed to it because I have been going around with the Lao Hela calling on them to come down to vote. Uh, but now the government is doing public consultation on voter registration. And I think we all should take this very seriously. 
because uh, there has been concern about vote rigging and so on. So now that they have opened the whole thing up for more, you know, amendment and so on, so we will look at it very closely. The exploitation of the elderly people in the old people's homes is a very, very serious problem. And I'm shocked that the police authorities have not been looking at this issue seriously. This is not news. Let, let me ask Hong Chao, is mm. this something that concerns you? Oh, well, obviously. I mean, vote raking, we have to tackle that and clamp down on that too. Well, I agree with all of you. I think this all illegal conduct has to be uh, dealt with. And I'm sure that I agree that people should look at the public consultation document. And I think many Hong Kong people will be very much concerned about this all illegal behavior. Emily Lau, Holden Chow, Joseph Cheng. Thank you very much indeed. That's it from us for this week. We'll leave you with more images of the district council elections and wait with bated breath for the coming LegCo poll. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.